is coming through the mirror Trying to clear the darkness in my soul If I call you, will you come there? A little timing goes a long way now For some reason, Alva has developed a very deep love for my slippers. I have two pairs of them and <laughs> she always finds them in the house and carries them to her place. And whenever I'm looking for one of my slippers, I just always find them in Alva's bed. Very easy. So it is Monday today, Monday morning. We are still in the beginning of February. And I thought I would do a little Q&A video today. I haven't really done that in quite some time. And I asked you yesterday on Instagram and on YouTube if you have any questions. And I am going to answer them today. And so that it's not too boring for you, I thought it could be nice to take you along today a little bit. Just answer your questions throughout the day. transporting my slippers again. Joachim is actually in Sweden right now. Uh, this morning, together with my mother, they are shopping for some groceries. We actually go to Sweden once a month to do that <laughs> because it's just so much cheaper in Sweden than here in Norway. And it's only, yeah, we live very close to the Swedish border. So we are only driving like one and a half hours. Uh, that was actually also a question, is it expensive to live in Norway? And the answer is definitely yes, it is very, very expensive here, especially when you live on the countryside. We only have two very small stores here and in order for them to survive, they have to, of course, take higher prices. We would love to support them more, but it's really not possible to afford like yeah, fresh stuff and so on we buy locally, but everything like, um, yeah, that you can store dry, we then buy in Sweden and we then always have like, like this huge um, pile of food. I don't like that feeling. We, it feels like a little bit like we are some hoarders or something <laughs> every month. It just is how it is. Next question is how is your new dog Alva settling in? <laughs> in general she's doing very fine but I would definitely say that yeah she really goes through phases. <laughs> this weekend actually there has been a really big dog race around here. It's called the Femen Löpe. Really big event with like many many dog sleds and they are actually all coming um, here over the lake. Like my two dogs are just getting completely mad because of course all the different smells and since that she's really completely out of her head again. It's as soon as something new happens, also exciting things, she gets yeah, almost a little bit hyperactive and it's very hard for her then to find calmness again and to calm down and you can really tell that she has been through a lot and that as soon as something new happens, as I said, she um, yeah, cannot really process it very well. We also started to get her used to the car, but everything like that takes a lot of time. Yeah, of course we will give her that time. <laughs> yeah, you said you find it's fine. It's so fine, Zeke. Yeah. No, you said you find it. You said it's fine. 
Okay, I think we have to go on. <laughs> Sandwich time. I think I made um, uh, a one day in my life video uh, last year, and our day just looked exactly <laughs> the same like it does now. I think I have to readjust the camera. There were some questions um, for the two of us, mm -hmm. and I thought when we are sitting here, we can just answer them. <laughs> Why am I out of <laughs> Do you want to build a family and do you have kids? And um, yeah, that's the question. Do we want to have kids? Maybe. Yeah. Simple answer. <laughs> we, don't know. we don't know yet. We know that there's no such time as the time is right. We are aware of that. But we do know that the time is not right. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, that's easier. So when the time is no longer not right, yeah. <laughs> then so, maybe. So for now, the answer is definitely no. Mm -hmm. Mm, right now, it's just not, not on the horizon. Maybe someday, maybe not. We don't know. Yes. And are we married? We are engaged. We are engaged. That's true. And we are planning to marry someday. Yes. On our farm. That's kind of the thing. <laughs> we would be married already. Yeah. But we've decided, we decided this very early on, mm -hmm. that we want to get married on our farm. <laughs> <laughs> I actually never wanted to marry. It never has been like a wish that I had. I and know she many... met me. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know many people have that, like this wish, like oh, someday I want to, like the family mm -hmm. is like the biggest thing. I'm <laughs> not so much like this, <laughs> um, but. Now that I know that yeah, we want to spend our life together, I don't see why not. <laughs> I think I'm a bit more Sounds romantic than that. <laughs> She is going to marry me. Mm -hmm. And whether or not she thinks it's incredibly romantic or not, it doesn't matter. I, I want a ring. <laughs> I want the ceremony. You will get a ring. Thank you. Lena is of course going to take my last name. <laughs> That's new. <laughs> Lena's not going to take my last name, but I might take hers. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter that much either. No. It's I think this it's it's not for me either. It does. It, it, if Lena said I don't want to get married. Then fine. But I want to be married. And that's very good. <laughs> I mean, I kind of proposed. This is true. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. And the rest remains a secret. <laughs> <laughs> question and the question is how do you handle the awareness of climate change and the ongoing planetary destruction how do you manage to stay sane when you know humans kill obscene numbers of animals every year what do you think are the best ways to help this world to become better that is of course a very very big question and i'm very sure i'm not having like the answer for it i am 
definitely often thinking I'm going insane. It's uh, very often that I feel very overwhelmed and um, troubled by what is going on in this world. And I also think that it's important to um, yeah, be aware of it. I'm not such a big fan of I don't watch the news because they make me feel bad. I don't think that you have to like watch news to an excess, <laughs> but I think it's definitely important to know what is going on and to not look away. And of course, trying something to contribute to make this world better. But I actually also think that it's very, very legitimate to also say that the best thing that I can contribute to the world right now is to take care of myself. I think that is absolutely legitimate because we are all no good for no one <laughs> if we are completely burned out or stressed or troubled or yeah, completely overwhelmed, then we are not helping anyone. So I think it's very fine to um, prioritize yeah, the own well-being to then maybe choose like one area in this world where yeah, you want to make a little change for the better. And I think it's important that we all do that. And I try to do that as well. Um, it's so important that we also have something positive that we are going towards to not only things we want to avoid or things we want to um, get away from uh, or fight against, but we also need something we want to fight for and to create a positive vision is I think very important and I hope that I can maybe yeah contribute in that way and of course I also hope to do more in the future as soon as I'm more back on track. But now I actually also have to work just a little bit. I don't have so much to do today. And I mean, making this video is also some kind of work. But um, yeah, I have to do uh, pack, uh, some packages and um, answer some... Oh, it's warm here. <laughs> right in the face. And um, yeah, take care of some computer stuff. And um, then I will also answer the question of um, work and so on. Because that also came up quite a lot. questions are more or less all work related. What we do for a living, how we can afford our life here, how our business is going, how it is to be self-employed and to share so much of your life online. And I think I can answer all of them together by yeah, just generally telling you a little bit how everything is going with our work because some things actually will change during this year. We made some decision decisions uh, after Christmas which feel very very good and yeah which also will change our work life and it will also affect this YouTube channel a little bit and the online store and all of that. And um, yeah, in order to explain it all, I think I just have to give you a little context. And I think I actually also never really told the whole story, how it all happened with YouTube and um, the whole development of that. Because I actually started YouTube uh, way, way, way before this channel. I started YouTube, I think I was 13 or something. So very, very young. And I started making videos about me and my horses. <laughs> it's very, very sweet. I also know that some of you still know me from that time. It's, yeah, like I said, very sweet. And it was actually also then where I discovered my love for making videos and... It developed to a point where I also wanted it to do for a living and I made more or less my career. I uh, actually quit school when I was 16, one year before the final exams. I struggled a lot in school. Yeah, did then many educations and internships and just trying to tried to find my way in the whole creative industry. And I then also studied digital film production. And during these studies, I started to build up my own business because I realized very quickly that working in a creative agency or something like that didn't really work for me. I tried very hard, but failed miserably. 
it always has been my dream to work self-employed and I just need this freedom to decide on my own how I want to work and when I want to work and all of that. So yeah, that always has been very clear to me. And uh, so I just did it uh, at a very young age. I think I was 19 or something that I just started my own business and offered my services as a freelancer in the areas of video production, photography and web design, graphic design and so on. Never really like went through the roof, but it always has been enough to make a living from it, which made me very, very proud. And I really worked a lot to make that possible and said yes to every opportunity. And after some time, I also got some clients who continuously worked with me so that I could rely on that new jobs from them will come, which then also allowed me to move to Norway and just work remotely for them. It always has been a lot of fun. I worked together with really inspiring people and it really has been my passion and just the biggest luck in the world for me to be allowed to do, to do that. During the whole time, YouTube has been my personal space where I uploaded videos mostly for myself and of course I also enjoyed if people liked the videos but uh, I mostly was just doing it for myself and it was like the place where I could just capture the world around me the way I see it and also express things that I just couldn't put into words and it was then in I think 2019 <laughs> that yeah, I had kind of a burnout in summer. I worked too much. It was when we moved into this little red house. You might still remember that from the earlier days. And it was then where I decided I really need a break and where I also could do that for the very first time to just take a break. It was then in winter when I just had a lot of time that I thought it could be fun to try something new on the YouTube channel and to make the videos a little bit more personal and maybe also speak in the camera and show a little bit more from our life. And <laughs> yeah, I just, I just experimented a little bit and it was then I think already the third or fourth video where I even showed myself in front of the camera that went viral. It was the video uh, about why I moved to Norway and it was a really, really big shock for me because I didn't expect that at all. It was like the most personal and raw video that I had ever done and it definitely wasn't made to be seen by two million people. <laughs> and I really, yeah, I had a little breakdown after that happened and um, still it always has been my dream to do YouTube. I never even thought that it, this could be an opportunity for me. And just the idea of making films about everything that I find inspiring and our life and the Nordic nature, it just, yeah, it was like the dream for me. So I still felt very, very horrible to speak in front of the camera. It was so uncomfortable. And I think you can also see that in my earlier videos. And still, I thought, yeah, if not now, then never. I just have to take this chance now that so many people are here and saw this video. And so I started to build up this YouTube channel and we then also launched our online store and it all went really well. And more and more, I started to reduce my client work because with the store and the YouTube channel, it actually was enough for us for a year or so. That all went very good. And then it came kind of to a little breaking point and I still remember very well when that happened and I think it happened after the video that is called Time to Say Goodbye before we move to this farm in Trondelag. I think they are just many many things came together and I was really not doing well and for the first time confronted with the situation of having to do videos, but really not feeling like being in front of the camera and sharing anything of my life because I was just like a really big mess. And yeah, the pressure really started to build up because now, of course, not only me, but also Joachim's business was dependent on these videos because the shop is only working together with the videos because through the videos, 
yeah, our customers uh, find the shop and know about it. So it's a very big part of it. And I started to feel this pressure and it really wasn't very good. <clears throat> I tried very hard in this last two years to kind of free myself from that again and um, yeah, just find the the inspiration of, of making videos and never really was horrible. I, I also enjoyed making videos the last two years, but I never had like this freedom and this inspiration that I had before that time. I somehow never really found that again. I think you can also see that in the videos, they are all like some of these huge, big stories that um, are also nice in a way, but they are not really like spontaneous anymore and not really... Mm, Yeah, it's, it always takes, of course, also so long to make these videos and they just come once a month and uh, YouTube doesn't really like that as well. And yeah, it's just many things coming together there that I just realized that uh, some things just need to change there. And so I decided to reawaken my business again and to start working as a freelancer again and to start with that again and You know, it excites me so much. I am so looking forward to work with inspiring people again and to tell stories that are not about me, where I'm not having to be in front of the camera, but uh, yeah, where I can just help people get their vision out into the world. I'm only doing video production though. I am not doing websites and stuff like that. I, it never really was like my thing. But um, yeah, so I'm starting with that again. I'm having my first job in the beginning of March now. Uh, it came through Joachim's mother and I'm very, very exciting about, excited about that. Maybe I will do a wedding in summer and yeah, we will see. In a way, of course, I'm also starting from scratch as I have to build it up here in Norway. I don't have my contacts in Germany anymore and it's going to be exciting. I hope that it will work and that's what I'm working on right now to build up this new business of mine again and I'm currently working on a new website and all that will be launched in spring and <clears throat> yeah, I'm very relieved to separate my job and YouTube a little bit again and to not having to earn money from these videos because yeah in some ways these videos always have been like this personal diary for me and I really wanted to keep it that way. I want the videos to to come out of inspiration and to bring you a good feeling and I don't want this pressure on my private life that I have to share something even in times where I'm not feeling like it. So I really hope and I believe that mm, yeah, this separation can bring me back my freedom and my um, courage to try something new. And with that, of course, also comes the second decision and that is that Joachim will, like maybe in this year or during the next two years, completely take over the store because of course in some ways it always has been his store he's creating all the art pieces he's doing like an incredible job and painting so much and like beautiful pieces but I'm doing everything else and it's like all the work that you don't see and that's also why I always say our store because I am really working a lot in the store. It really takes a lot to keep a store like that running and to keep the overview and to get everything organized and the taxes and the money and the packaging material and the customer support and all of that. Uh, yeah, I'm currently doing and we kind of built up the store together or I mostly built it up and Joachim created the things we want to sell and now I think it's time that he takes it over and it feels good for, um, for both of us, I think. So I will more and more retreat from managing the store and make space for Joachim also to find his own way with that and yeah the store will have to stay stand on its own legs from now on i really love our store and the products and everything but it always has been joachim's dream uh, i never wanted to have a store i i love it now that it's there but it never really has been my dream of course i will still help with the photos and stuff like that but um 
I mostly want to let go of the responsibility to uh, keep the store alive through the videos. I want to separate that as well. So Joachim actually also makes his own videos now, once a week. There will be either a live stream or a video or both. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in that, you can also follow him there. And of course, the art and the store will continue to be a big part of our life. Uh, it's just that I'm not so much involved with it anymore. Yes, a very long answer <laughs> and I'm very warm, um, but I hope... Um, I managed to to explain how it all happened and and so on yeah and i think for this channel and for the videos it will only it will only do good i'm very happy to share when i feel like it but i also want want to be allowed to not share when i don't feel like it and i know that you are seeing it the same way it's just for for me or for us then the question about how we do we earn money and i think with this solution we solved at least that question as well and yes it's a win-win for everyone and now i think we have to go to the little uh, store here and i think they close very soon so maybe we have to go now let's go okay so where are we going we are going to the local store it's <laughs> uh, but that is where uh, our packages arrive it's not where we can send packages <laughs> For that we have to drive actually 40 minutes, but it's where we uh, can receive packages at least. And today came a package from Ukraine, uh, which are the new journals. They help you go. <laughs> your it's on. It's always uh, a relief when they come because of course you know that in Ukraine and everything, the situation is not so good. At least really want to try to keep supporting them, especially now. Can't wait to start painting them. Mm -hmm. A question that also came up quite a few times is the question if I speak Norwegian. Yes, kind of. <laughs> I definitely understand Norwegian, I can read Norwegian and I speak enough Norwegian to um, at least communicate and come around. What I'm still struggling very much with is when I'm in a group of people who are speaking Norwegian, uh, then my head just goes blank and everything is gone and I just cannot really find the right word. So that happens still, but I think on a one on one conversation, it's okay. I want to learn it and I'm trying my best and everything else will then just come with time. I kind of stopped pressuring myself with that. It will come. I have started with knitting this winter and I can definitely tell that I have found a new obsession. <laughs> I've now knitted my very first scarf and I'm currently working on my very first Icelandic sweater. Just finished both of the sleeves which will then be connected to the body part and yeah it's very nice to learn a new craft and it's really a reward every evening when I can just sit here and continue knitting and just yeah, listen to something or watch something. It's a very, very cozy activity and really helps me 
to calm down and yeah it's so really nice i think to create your own clothing or i mean i'm still at the very beginning still learning yeah <laughs> but to answer the next question how is the farm searching going and if we will buy a place soon uh, if we are still looking for a farm and all of that farm topic um, yeah so the answer is definitely yes we're still looking for a farm we also have been doing quite an effort last summer and looked at many different places and put up flyers around here and i think by now also most of the or many people around here also know that we are looking for something and yeah of course i'm also keeping track on everything that comes out for sale and at the same time we also took a little break last year from the farm searching it's also quite an exhausting process actually to keep looking at all these different places and yeah you just can't help to start dreaming or think about maybe this is now the place and then you go there and yeah you're just disappointed every time and um, yeah, the right place just hasn't appeared yet. I would really not say that we are looking for something like incredibly fancy or that our expectations are that high, but um, I have said that so much before, but I think it just has to feel right and the place has to have a certain something. In many ways, I also just trust that there are probably reasons why it hasn't happened for us yet and maybe we are meant to be here for a little while longer i don't know what i definitely know is that we are having very big dreams and maybe we are not just quite <laughs> that ready for that yet i don't know maybe there are things to learn for us first i have a big trust that if the time is right it will happen and we yeah, we just do everything that we can or that feels right in the moment and just go with whatever comes our way. The whole topic also kind of leads for the next question, which is about, just have to look it up one more. Um, of course, if we will stay at the place where we are now. With that, we are actually a bit uncertain at the moment because on one hand, this place is just absolutely fantastic and we really love to live here and still sometimes i don't really know if there's really so much more for us to do here i was a little bit shocked this morning to realize that our days just look exactly the same like they did one year ago and as much as i am grateful for this last year to be allowed to yeah have this kind of break and to have this time i am also yeah i really like to grow i like to develop i like to build something up and i don't know if there's so much more for us to do here really yeah i guess we will just see what what the year brings and um, yeah Leute können sich ja gar nicht konzentrieren. Die werden ja nur auf dich gucken. Mm -hmm. Wenn sie überhaupt. Can you concentrate looking at this? Wie so ein Familienfoto. <lacht> okay, so to the question. To the question. Um, what are our future plans? And what are our plans for this year and for this summer? Well, of course, what are our future plans? It's a bit connected to what happens to the farm and so on. Yeah. So in some ways, we everything don't have any happen. clear, yeah, everything could happen we don't have clear plans, but we do have a few things. Yeah, I will definitely continue to work on the van. Mm -hmm. Of course, for me to start my business again and for Joachim to take over the store. Yes. And uh, other than that, everything could happen. Everything or nothing <laughs> could happen at any given time. Yeah, I think that sums it up very nicely. Yeah, <laughs> but I would really, really love to travel around a bit this summer again in the van. Mm -hmm. That would be very nice. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to planting again and for spring to start. Yeah. 
that's 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 the plan. That's the plan. So thank you so much for your wonderful questions. I hope that I could at least like answer the most asked ones.